Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a book club video on the second novel in uh, Meg Habit's Mediator series, and that one is called The Ninth Key. Now, I read this book back at the beginning of July, and I don't know why I didn't do it, but I didn't film a book club video for it back then, so now I'm stuck doing it now, and I haven't read the book, although I just finished up the third one, which is awesome, and I forgot to put my little sticky thing on there, but I finished up the third one, so stay tuned for that, it will be in the playlist down below. Uh, as well as on my main channel. So go, go take a look at that if you're interested in the series. But I honestly, I forget a little bit about what happened, so bear with me here. But I do remember a lot of the details that happened, so I'm going to give you the little rundown. And if you like it, go read it. And if you don't, well then, I, I still think you should read it because the first book and the last book in the series are just too beautiful to like pass up. Also, the first book is right here. Uh, here's the first book. Woo! It just fell. Oh, I know, I just fell. It's a picture of me when I was in grade two. This is the first book, uh, May Cabot Shadowland, The Mediator. I don't know why it's lighting up. I, it's too bright. And then this one is the third one. So if I could just cover that up, that's what it looks like. Uh, and like the people who are in the certain color like that she's wearing, I don't even know why this is so bright. Here, one second, let me cover this little thing up. There we go. So the people who are purple, the same color as uh, what she's wearing, those are the ghosts, and the people who are not, that is a human. Same with this one. Um, you can kind of see she's wearing like a teal color on her t-shirt, and the, the ghosts are different colors. So, the second book, let's get into that. The second book was not my favorite, I'm going to admit. The first and the last one are my favorites, because those are the only two I remember. But this one was interesting. They dealt with other paranormal kind of creatures, even though they weren't actually paranormal creatures. So, um, why am I forgetting everything? Suze, Susanna, or whatever her name is, I can't remember, but it's Suze for short. She wakes up in the middle of the night and, um, a lady is there, it's a ghost, and she's screaming her head off. It's like, ah, you have to tell him he didn't actually kill me. And so she's like, who do you want me to tell? And she's saying, go find somebody named Red. And, uh, oh, I missed part. At the very beginning, uh, Suze went to Kelly Prescott's party, and Kelly Prescott is, uh, class president or something like that, and they're, like, friends, and she got into some poses in Oak, and then danced with somebody named Tad Beaumont, who is actually a very important character in this book, so stay tuned for that name. And they danced together, and they both have poison oak. So, uh, yeah. So she wakes up, and the screaming lady's like, oh, tell Red he didn't actually kill me. So she has her friend Cece find out who Red is, and it turns out that it's actually Tad Beaumont's father, and that's what they call him. So she goes to investigate, and they are very rich. Like, Tad goes to the private school, um, a really exclusive private school in, like, their town or in their area. And so her, or sorry, his dad is like a very important, rich business developer, uh, like a real estate developer. And so obviously they're rich. They have a huge Manson, Manson mansion. And so she goes there pretending that she's doing a story for the school newspaper. Really, she's not. So that's where that kind of unfolds. And she thinks that he's like a vampire because he's really creepy. When you read about this character, he's actually super creepy and... Yeah, I was very comfortable reading about him. And so, yes, I can't even remember his name, but it's like Mr. Beaumont and he's really rich. So I, I kind of forget everything that happened like in the middle of the book. So if you are interested, go read that. But I do remember the ending of it. It turns out that um, her, or his dad, sorry, drugged Tad and they were in kind of like his house eating supper because Tad and her started dating. Tad and Sue's, Sue's started dating. So we kind of like drugged him and he wanted to hear more about her psychic I can see ghosts story. But then the uncle kind of returns her and is like, oh, you will never speak of this. Don't come around here, blah, blah, blah. And so then like the next day or a couple days later, she's at school and gets sent home and she gets kidnapped on the way back. And it turns out the uncle kidnapped her and they're holding her captive in their mansion and they're in the dad's, not the uncle's, the dad's office and the windows are all barred so she can't get out. There is like a monitoring system, like video cameras in there so he can see her every move, the uncle, not the dad. The dad knows nothing about this. Um, so I can't remember exactly but she gets out and Jesse helps her who is the ghost that lives in her room and she's kind of developed a crush for him. Yes, I love Jesse De Silva. He's like my favorite character ever. And so they get out and they're okay. Tad's okay. Um, and they find out that the uncle, 
Oh wait, I didn't even mention this part. Why am I... I like scatterbrained. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do the best that I can because I feel like if I upload the third one before the second one, it's just going to be totally ruined. But okay, get back into this. So why is the uncle important? The company that the real estate developing company that uh, the dad owns is actually responsible for a couple of deaths. Now, I can't remember why they killed him. But, like, every couple of years, one of their employees goes missing, and they die, and they end... I don't even know if they get found, but they just go missing. And it actually turns out to be the uncle who is killing them and then burying them places. So, in the end, yada, 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 they get out. Tad moves up to San Francisco with his dad, and it turns out that the dad was being either drugged or not given his medication for his little problems, and the uncle was all involved in that. So, I'm not sure if he goes to jail. I can't remember. I think he does. And yeah, all things are good and dandy. Oh, and there's another little ghost. I forgot to mention him. Um, it's a little boy who Sue's meets and he's like, please get my cat. My parents are, they like sent him out into the wilderness. So Sue's gets him and his name is Spike. And apparently the way that they describe him, he's like the ugliest thing in the world, but they fall in love. Well, not really fall in love, but like Jesse loves the cat and the cat like loves him. So Spike lives with them now and in her room on the second floor, he climbs up a pine tree to get onto the roof and climbs in the window and lives with them and only really comes around when Jesse is there. So yes, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry if that was like really scattered and all over the place. It is a good book series if you really do want to read it. I will be doing a review on the third one next and so stay tuned for that. But I will see you later, I guess. Okay, bye.